Hi, and welcome to Energy News Bulletin, covering Australasian companies and projects in the oil and gas, renewables and energy commodities sector. Brought to you by Aspermont Limited. In this podcast, we look at helium as a commodity, and one Australian company considered a pioneer in the helium industry. A noble gas, helium is one of the most common elements in the universe. So why are we facing a huge shortfall and why can it be worth up to a thousand times the price of natural gas? These are just some of the questions I hope to have answered by my next guest, Joanne Kendrick, the Chief Executive and Managing Director of exploration company Blue Star Helium. Welcome, Joe. Thanks for having us, Paul. Helium companies listed on the Australian Securities Exchange are few and far between. Uh, in fact, Blue Star is the only uh, company solely focused on helium uh, developments um, and exploration. Can, can you give me a bit of an overview of Blue Star? Yeah, that's right. So we're the only helium pure play company listed on the ASX. We're focused in the US uh, we've currently developed a dominant land position in the Las Alamas County in Colorado, uh, and that saw world class, really world class helium production back in the pre World War Two era of last century um, from a field called Model Dome, and that's proven up uh, a really prospective helium play fairway in that county uh, with world class resources grades around eight percent concentration of helium. Uh, and we've developed a portfolio of prospects and leads across about 130,000 acres, uh, gross acres in that county now. And two of those prospects, Enterprise and Galileo, we've just had certified by an independent resource certifier at 3 BCF or 3 billion cubic feet uh, of recoverable helium. So we're looking forward to a big year. Mm, indeed. Um, you mentioned uh, this world-class resource with grades of 8%, which to many of our listeners might not seem like a lot. Can you explain what that means? Yeah, so the more than 90% of the helium that's produced worldwide is produced in association with conventional natural gas or hydrocarbon gas, uh, and more often than not, liquefied natural gas. Uh, these, the normal producible type helium concentrations in those products are anywhere from 0.1 of 1% concentration to 0.5 of 1% helium concentration. So eight really is uh, sort of 10 to, 10 to 100 times the normal producible concentration of helium. So let's go into helium as it is. I mean, most of us um, think of party balloons. Um, I'm always up for a party, yes. but the market is actually a, a lot bigger than that. Can you uh, give us an overview into, into what the use of helium um, is? Yeah, so two of the fun ones are obviously party balloons and making your voice sound funny. <laughs> um, but these are our only minor uses, of course. But it's And right now it's a, it's a high-value gas in, in great demand. It... it um, it uh, saw its first big demand wave in the space exploration period of last century, uh, and it's still used in space exploration today, and that's demand in that area is, uh, is going up. You might have seen the recent launch by SpaceX and, and so on. Um, so, but other uses, it's the, it's the lightest material, which gives its, give its, um, its usefulness in balloons and, and lifting. Uh, it's also non-explosive. Uh, and it's unique in its super cooling ability as well, which makes it a crucial component. And one importantly that can't be substituted out in a number of areas. Um, so medical devices, MRI machines, but other high tech applications like computer hard drives, uh, the Hadron Collider, uh, the manufacture of fibre optics uh, and a number of other things as well. So the type of high tech industries that have really been developing significantly over the last decade or so. You mentioned that helium is often um, associated with natural gas and oil and gas production, um, although it is a separate element unto itself, a separate gas unto itself. Um, how do those sorts of, well, how does the geology work for trapping helium? Because like you mentioned, it's a light gas, which means it would probably be more prone to escaping, I would imagine. Yeah, that's right. So while it often occurs with hydrocarbon gas, uh, it doesn't always because the source is is quite different. So hydrocarbon gas, the source of that is the decay of of old organic matter. 
Um, the source of helium, by contrast, is the radioactive decay of uranium and, and thorium. So those, those two things can occur at the same location, uh, but sometimes they don't. So in the area that we're looking at in La Sanamas, we're looking at a hydrocarbon-free area. Mm. Um, so we're looking at a source of uranium and thorium generating an alpha particle which collects electrons and, and um, then becomes helium. And you're right, it's a very small... It's a very small molecule in case. In in fact, it's often used in leak detection, yeah, which okay. gives you an idea of, of just how small it is. And while it it, um, it migrates into the same and is found in the same sorts of traps as, as conventional oil and gas, the seal over that trap needs to be a lot more competent yeah. uh, than is necessary for trapping uh, gas. So that's right. Um, yeah, we need the we need the competent seal, and we know we have that in this area, which is one of the reasons why we're so interested in it, mm. uh, because we know that Model Dome had an accumulation of helium. Yeah. Uh, so we know the seal was competent there, uh, and we've been able to extend that fairway away from Model Dome by looking at some old uh, exploration wells aimed at oil and gas in the area. Uh, Joe. We know about the LNG market. We know that there is um, an oil market in its own right. But is there such a thing as a helium market? And how does that work? You know, helium's obviously bought and sold, but there's no public market, as it were. So pricing is is opaque. Sales are all directly business to business and considered highly confidential in terms of their pricing, uh, rather than it being a publicly traded commodity like, say, oil or, or gold. Um, most wholesale helium from E and P companies, such as ourselves, is is sold under sort of long term ten year contracts or longer uh, to the big industrial gas aggregators like Air Liquide or Praxair or Air Products. These types of companies, um, although there is a growing small market for spot sales to end users mm. as well, so that's quite interesting. Um, although they're still business to business and the pricing is still confidential. Um, but just to give you a bit of a baseline for the pricing, the uh, last public and competitively priced helium uh, in the US was the final public auction from the US government strategic reserve. Yeah. And that's achieved an average of, uh, in US dollars, $280 per MCF, which was quite respectable yeah. in comparison to natural gas prices, obviously, in the US. Um, but anecdotally, the uh, the spot the spot market since then has seen significant increases, and you know there's talk of a thousand dollars in MCF mm. or, or more being achieved in that market. Um, you recently announced that Enterprise and Galileo uh, contained three billion cubic feet of prospective helium resources. So even at I mean we were just talking about pricing there, even at two hundred and eighty dollars per million cubic foot that represents a large in-the-ground resource, if you like, um, for a company your size. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's right. And and that's one reason why these prospects are highly ranked in our portfolio and why I'm so excited about getting out there to drill uh, these prospects later on this year. Uh, one of the great things about uh, leverage to that in ground value is the the cost of drilling there is is quite is going to be quite low. A mm. uh, yeah. proof of concept well is only going to cost us three hundred thousand uh, US dollars on a dry hole cost yeah. basis, which when you compare it to that potential uh, in ground value is is quite some astonishing yeah. leverage. Um, so yeah, that's quite exciting. So. Um you are very confident that this is going to be a success um, and we obviously wish you all the best of luck in, in, in striking the, uh, the helium deposit. But you. if your dreams come true and you find, um, you know, you really firm up this 3 BCF of helium, will that just be sold on long-term contracts or are you going to consider other options? Well, our development concept here is to approach it in a modular fashion uh, that does a couple of things for us. Firstly, it limits the the uh, development cost to get us through to first production in the event of success, and it shortens the time frame to first production as well. Um, so what we're putting in place before the first well is drilled is we'll be putting in place the arrangements to get the first development module out there, um, which will uh, develop five wells 
and uh, 2 million static cubic feet a day of raw gas yeah. or yeah. around 50 million cubic feet of helium per annum. Uh, now, we're intending that, that, will, that first, the production from that first module will be sold under long-term contracts uh, just to give us a nice baseline of, of cash flow to then step forward into more fully developing the field as we go further. Yeah. yeah. Out of interest, what happens? So, I mean, I guess um, as a company, you're going to drill the well, you're then going to pipe the gas and that's it for you. You, you, you don't then on sell it or anything else. Is that right? Yeah. So what, what we need to do at site is we'll have in any one of these modules, development modules, we'll have five wells connected up. So there'll be a, li- a small local gathering system to the processing plant. Yeah. Uh, and then that helium, which is concentrated and sold, will be sold from the location of the processing plant. So And that will be sold as a compressed gas into uh, what they call tube trailers in the US, which are basically, and then will be basically trucked away. Yeah. Yeah. So no big, so while there'll be a local gathering system, there won't be any large export pipeline or anything because we'll be selling directly at the plant gate to our, to our purchaser. That also comes with the benefits of not having, uh, you know, to to go through a whole heap of environmental approvals to create a giant pipeline. That's right. So, yeah, those big export pipelines can be quite troublesome to put into place in the in the US. So it's it's uh, nice that we don't have to go through that. Mm. Um, let's take a look at the rest of your portfolio. Um, Blue Star, small cap on the ASX. Um, you're a helium sole helium focused play um apart from enterprise can you walk me through what your other assets are yeah so enterprise itself is around uh 15,000 of our gross acres in las animas yeah now just recently we've got up close to 130,000 gross acres wow uh, and so you can see that Enterprise is only a, a small portion of the position that we have there. Uh, so we've got about 10 other uh, prospects and leads that we're maturing and we're trying to get to the same level as Enterprise. Uh, and by that I mean we're, we're um, consolidating the land in and around them. Uh, so we've got that significant net position and also we'll be moving uh, one or two or perhaps more of the stronger prospects into a similar prospective resource assessment as we've just completed on Enterprise and Galileo as well. You were considered a first mover in this area of Colorado. Um, that in itself is is quite a, you know, I, I'm imagining a whole, it's like a little gold rush, you know, everyone going, oh my God, there's helium here. Yeah. Did people start buying up patches around you? Yeah, well, we're starting to see a little bit more competition, yes. Yeah. So okay. when, the, when the helium market really took off and there was uh, a big gap in the supply demand and prices started rising, uh, what we saw was a couple of other locations in the States really had a very much a land rush. Yeah. Uh, and the places like Arizona and, and Utah where this happened uh, were areas similar to ours in that there was no hydrocarbon uh, dilution of the helium. Yeah. Um, and there was previous production proving that there was a competent seal and a, and a reservoir and so on. So... So those other areas where they had proven all of those play elements that we're now seeing in, or we've analysed in Las Animas, that's where the land rush started. Okay. Uh, and so those areas have seen some significant increases in land value in terms of acreage. Yeah. And we're just starting to see, I think, the start of that competition in our area with more people getting involved and, and um, higher prices being paid in auction for, for some of this land around too. We're just about out of time, Joe. but um, before you go, why is helium so rare? I mean, it's the most abundant uh, <laughs> resource right. in, the, in, in the entire universe, but how come on our little rock it's No, that's it's right. So helium rare. is the most, uh, one of the most abundant elements in the, in the entire universe, but it's a bit difficult to mine it from the centre of the sun. <laughs> so <laughs> so the, only, the only place, it cannot be manufactured yeah. uh, by any known way on earth as it, as, as it stands. Uh, it's extremely, it is in the atmosphere at five parts per million, but it, it's extremely expensive to, to try to extract it from the atmosphere. Um, and it is, is only made on earth by the radioactive decay of uranium and thorium. And it's only effectively trapped in these 
uh, very effective uh, subsurface traps such as we've seen at Model Dome and other places. Uh, once it escapes into the atmosphere, it's so light that gravity can't hold it to the earth. It yeah. simply floats off into space. How interesting. Joe. thank you so much for your time. Thanks very much, Paul.